Uh, my name is Molly Yumbauer. I am the chair of Solid Grounds Board of Directors, and I'm honored to welcome you to our 13th annual Every Family Needs a Home Breakfast. Before we get started, I'll, I'd like to take a minute to call all of our greeters and ushers up to stage, which are right here. Uh, they'll be heading off to breakfast and school soon, um, but I wanted to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves to everybody. So what I'm going to do is ask you to come up on stage and tell us your name, your grade, and now that it's finally warm outside, what you, what's your favorite thing to do outside? How about that? Okay? All right. Who wants to start? Dominic? Let's see if I can. There you go. Good morning. My name is Dominic. Um, I'm in third grade, and my favorite thing to do outside is play sports. All right. That sounds like fun. Thank you, Dominic. I'm going this way. Thanks. Hi, my name is Deshaun, and I like basketball. I do too. And, it's fun. And I'm in grade five. All right. Who's your favorite player? Basketball? Yeah, who's your favorite basketball player? Um, Kyrie Irving. Okay, cool. My name is Kiege, and I'm in fifth grade. My favorite things to do outside is go play football or basketball. Ooh, all right. Go so girl. That's awesome. your name? Can you say it? Is it Celicia? So your name's Celicia, and what grade are you in? Six. You're in sixth grade? Do you have anything you really like to do outside? Ride my bike. I love to ride my bike too. Way to go. Thank you. My name is Marmar, and I'm in second grade. Uh, my favorite thing to do outside is go swimming. Oh, that's fun. My name's Nalea, and I like to roller skate. I'm in second grade. Way to go. <laughs> My name's Lorena, and I'm in first grade. I like to do outside is play. Yeah, me too. Thank you. My name is Eddie. Um, I'm in third grade, and my favorite thing to do outside is ride my bike. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, thank you. Didn't they do a great job? Let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you, you guys. Have a great day at school. All right, so the children are one of the main reasons that I got involved with Solid Ground. Providing a safe, stable, and nurturing environment is essential to ensure a child has the opportunity to reach his or her full potential. This is why uh, Solid Ground has so many child-focused programs, such as after-school tutoring, boys and girls club, family activities such as trips to museums, parks, or sporting events, and child care for our littlest ones. Supporting the, ch the children at Solid Ground is just one of the many resources we provide our clients to help break the cycle of homelessness. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I want to thank you again for all coming this morning to support such a great organization. I also want to say a special thank you to this morning's sponsors. Duffy Development Company, API Group, the Shavlik Family Foundation, Holstead Consulting, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota, the Trade Press, and Steve Gorenson video. Please give our sponsors a round of applause to thank them for their support. We also have some elected officials in the room with us today, and I'd like to invite them to stand up and be recognized. So if you are an elected official and you're joining us, please stand up. Anybody in there? Yeah, even if there's only one, we appreciate it. All right, well, we want to thank you for coming today. We want to again thank you for coming today. We welcome your partnership in helping to solve the affordable housing crisis in our community. It will require all of us to work together. And finally, I also want to th say thank you to some of the people who have helped this breakfast be such a success for the past 13 years, our table captains. We couldn't do it without you. So let's give a round of applause to the person who invited you here today. We are all here to make a difference in the lives of women, men, and children in our community. 
On the back of your program, you will see some of our outcome measurements for, from 2017, and they are very impressive. As you can see, the work done by Solid Ground makes a big difference for the families that we serve. None of this is possible without your support. So please give generously here today. Now we're going to take a short break so you can enjoy your breakfast and visit with others at your table. And in a few minutes, we will come back to our program. Thank you. My name is Trisha Kaufman, and I'm the Executive Director of Solid Ground. This is our 13th annual breakfast supporting the work of Solid Ground. And since I am not a, a superstitious person, I'm going to refer to this as our lucky 13th annual breakfast. We're lucky to have all of you here with us this morning, and I certainly feel fortunate to be leading this wonderful organization doing such great work in the community. I also feel fortunate to have had the upbringing that I did. When I was just two years old, my family moved into the home where I would spend my entire childhood. I was doubly blessed to grow up on a dead end with the woods at the end. So there was hardly any traffic and all the kids would explore the trail in the wood or play kickball in the street after dinner. And being part of that neighborhood also kept us all in line because we knew if our parents didn't find out whatever we were up to, surely somebody else's would. <laughs> I had roots in that neighborhood. Having a stable home environment also provided important opportunities for me. Attending the same schools from year to year helped build my confidence and gave me many advantages. I didn't need to worry about whether I would make new friends at a school or that I could keep up academically with the other kids in a new school. I, I mean, all kids have that concern at some point in their lives, but I didn't worry about where I was going to live or if I would have clean clothes to wear every day at school. I wasn't bouncing around from place to place or school to school like so many of the kids do who come to solid ground. And maybe why that's why this work is so important to me. Providing housing for a family who doesn't have one not only provides safety and security, but also the chance to have the kind of opportunities for education, health, and employment that lead to a meaningful and happy life. And housing is really just the beginning. More than 80% of homeless adults report having some kind of chronic health condition, a mental illness, chemical dependency, traumatic brain injuries, chronic health conditions. And children who experience homelessness also often have behavioral and academic needs. The families we serve need so much more than just a safe place to live. They also need services and supports that help them overcome these barriers and allow them to spread their wings. Solid Ground has two new programs that are gonna do just that. We recently created a new children's services specialist position to help families in our scattered site program secure affordable, reliable childcare and increase enrollment in early learning <coughs> programs. The specialist is also trained to identify and assess any special needs in those kids. Homelessness, domestic violence, poverty, they all really take a toll on children and it, it impacts their health and their development. But by identifying and addressing these needs early on, we can positively impact the lives of our kids. We've provided similar services at East Metro Place for many years and we see the difference it makes and so we're so excited to be able to offer these kinds of services for our other clients, including our veterans and their families in our home front program. Soon, just this summer or fall, we're going to be launching a new mentoring program for middle and high school youth. A lot of our services are focused on very young children, but our older ne youth need just as many services, may ma maybe more services, uh, to overcome the challenges that they've faced. Basing our program on another successful model that's operating in the Twin Cities, we're going to be recruiting mentors to match to youth aged 11 to 16. <laughs> mentors will have contact with their mentees several times each month, and we're also going to provide an activity fund so that um, mentors don't have to worry about whether they have enough funds to be able to volunteer as mentors. Our goal for this program is to expose our youth to new opportunities, 
increase their engagement at school and in the community and learn how to set and achieve key goals. A key goal of Solid Ground, of course, is to increase the number of families we serve because there's so much need in the community. But we need more landlords to achieve that goal. With a vacancy rate of less than 2%, it has been really tough to find rental properties right now. I have been in this work for more than 20 years and I have never seen anything like the market that we're in right now. And my fear is that things are gonna get worse before they get better. In a few minutes, you're gonna hear from Charity, a participant in one of our Scattered Site programs, talk about her time in home again and how it has changed her life. So if you or someone you know has rental property, please call us. Um, we would love to partner with you. And because it's so important to prevent homelessness whenever possible, especially in this housing market, we're exploring a new collaboration to prevent homelessness for unstably housed families in our community. So much of Solid Ground's work is focused on rehousing families after they've already become homeless. Uh, if we can prevent them, from becoming homeless in the first place and keep them rooted in their neighborhood, their outcomes are gonna be so much better. This potential collaboration is yet another example of how Solid Ground is doing whatever we can to address the housing crisis in our community today. And your support allows us to do that. Unlike most housing agencies, only about a third of our funding comes from government sources. And government funding is a little uncertain right now. And when we do receive it, it usually goes to housing, not to services. But your support allows the flexibility to fund services like the Children's Services Specialist, like the mentoring program, and other services that allow us to respond to the needs that our families present. We are very excited this morning to announce that one of our longtime donors, Solve Swenside, has generously offered to match $1,000 of each new Giving Circle gift up to $10,000. Our Giving Circle members make a five-year commitment to us, and that helps us be able to plan for the future and do new programs like the ones I've described. This matching challenge is a great opportunity for you to commit to solid ground and our families for the long term, and your donation can go just that much further. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming today and being an advocate for kids and families in our community. It is said that there are only two lasting bequests that we can give to our children. One of these is roots and the other is wings. Thank you for making both of these possible. things that attracted me to Solid Ground was just how unique they are in terms of addressing a problem. We're faced with such enormous problems right now. The typical reaction to that is either to be frustrated and not do anything because it seems too enormous to address or to put a band-aid on it. And Solid Ground doesn't do either of those things. They address uh, the very complex and enormous problem of homelessness uh, in its entirety. Um, it's, not, it's not just shelter, it's housing, and it's not just housing, it's a transformation. They're people, they're, they're, and, some, and somewhere along the line something happened that didn't allow them to uh, maintain their housing. I ended a 29-year relationship that was um, dysfunctional. Um, there was using in the house and um, I decided to get sober and my partner did not. So um, to make a better life for myself and my son, I decided to leave. So we were homeless for a while at a shelter downtown called um, the family place, uh, there for a few months, and then in a garage for a couple months. And then I got the phone call to come 
do an interview here at Solid Ground. There's a lot of support here. I might cry. <laughs> There's a lot of support here, and I don't think I would have got that out there on my own. Um, a lot of new things that I had to do for the first time, and um, I really got that support here at Solid Ground. Teaching stability, teaching a mindset of, of um, that kind of consistency is really what it's all about. And learning that, and learning how to, to um, be responsible and accountable to your community and bringing that value of who you are to your community. That's really what building our, that sustainability is all about. DBT is dialectical behavioral therapy, and it has four components. It's mindfulness, interpersonal effectiveness, distress tolerance, and emotional regulation. And what, what DBT, why I think it's the most effective, because it is not about anybody else but you. It's, it's a good group, you know, it teaches you things that you don't know. For myself, it reminded me things that I didn't know and to take a step backwards and, and gather myself, you know, and um, to take that deep breath and relax when things get heavy. You learn how to um, approach things in a simpler way, um, using your wise mind and not in your rational or your emotional mind. Um, it really helped with setting up healthy boundaries with um, people that I've stepped away from in long-term relationships that I still need in my life, but yet they have to be healthy boundaries. And so that's what it also teaches. It teaches people their, how to say no, because sometimes people don't know how to say no, especially to family members, and you have to set boundaries. It's so simple that you think, why haven't I used that before? Or why haven't I thought of that concept before? It's just so simple, but amazing changes. I think the most critical piece that anyone needs to understand is everyone deserves to have a home. I believe that with all my heart. And they deserve an opportunity to better themselves and position themselves to be a part of the community again and bring that value of family to their children. To say thank you for my heart. You don't know me. You don't know the people that are going to come behind me and maybe didn't know the people that were before me. But without you, some of us wouldn't make it. And even though we don't get a chance to say thank you, we do, we say thank you. I think it's a great use of anybody's charitable dollar because it's an investment. It's an investment in the community and the people that are here. Um, and it, it's a unique opportunity to support an organization that's very effective at meeting their mission. Um, one of the things we do on the board is focus on the strategic plan. What strategies do we want to put in place in order that we can meet our mission? So what does that look like? Well, how do we measure it? What sort of performance are we getting against that, that, that metrics? And I'm talking about how many people are uh, leave solid ground into permanent stable housing. Um, how many have increased their educational opportunities? Has income increased? How, how many hours of tutoring are, are children getting? Is that increasing? Are we, are, we, are we doing the things we're supposed to do? And I think giving your money to solid ground is investing in those kinds of solutions and that kind of effectiveness. These are families that um, need a second chance. I lost everything I had for 29 years and with my mental health I thought I was doomed. <laughs> um, this is a safe haven here. They really offer a lot <clears throat> for families. Homeless people come in all shapes and sizes, ages. Yeah, I'm grateful for this place. Hi, my name is Charity, and I'm here today because I really want people to know um, how grateful I am to have solid ground in my life. Sorry. I'm actually at a loss for words. Um, I was at my wit's end, 
and you guys lifted me up out of the dark. And if Sal Ground would not have called me that day, I honestly don't know what my life would look like today. To give you a full picture of where I am in my life and how I got here, I need to go back quite a bit. When I was 13 years old, I was diagnosed with depression, bipolar, and anxiety disorders. My dad and my stepmom didn't know what was wrong with me, and I was committed to a <coughs> for a mental health um, observation, 28-day mental health observation. Sorry. When I got out, I tried to commit suicide and was put to a juvenile detention center. I was there for about nine months until my grandparents finally could get me out. My dad just couldn't understand. He thought everything I was going through was a choice. He wouldn't fill my medications because he thought I was simply acting out. <coughs> When I was 15, I had my first son, Jack, and it was my son's dad who first introduced me to methamphetamine. It was an abusive and controlling relationship that I finally was able to break free of when my mom was diagnosed with cancer and I moved home to take care of her. She died when I was 21. For the next 18 months, I did as many drugs as possible and I felt like I had nothing to live for. One day I woke up in jail and I realized I was pregnant and I was able to get sober and stay sober until my son Jaden was about one. And then we moved back to, into my dad's house and my addiction crept on, on me once again. Over the next couple of years, my addiction spiraled out of control. I was getting into more and more trouble and I realized my life was a mess. I couldn't, so I gave up custody of my children. I couldn't have my kids waiting for me anymore. It wasn't fair to them. When this happened, the judge said to me, I have so much faith in you, but you need time to work on charity and the kids can't wait, so where would you like to place them? It rips your heart right out. And it was the hardest thing I think I've ever done, but it was the best thing I could have done at that time. I went to prison for drug-related felonies. It was like a revolving door. I'd get out and I kept going right back. It was a lonely place. I went to treatment upon my last release from prison, and I relapsed once after that, but I've been sober since September 5th, 2012. You learn more about yourself every time you go to treatment. I think I probably completed nine, nine treatments. I worked on trauma, on the things that made me feel empty inside. I started going to AA. I couldn't see my kids until I had six months of sobriety. In 2015, God blessed me with another baby, Liam. Having Liam gave me hope. It gave me the courage to get my other kids back. After being gone for so long, I hadn't wanted to disrupt their lives. On December 12th of 2015, I got kissed custody of my kids back. At this point, my eldest son, Jack, was an adult and had already graduated high school. <clears throat> Liam, who is three now, has autism. When I brought him in for his 12-month well child check, his lead levels came back elevated. At that time, we were living on the top floor of my boyfriend's mom's duplex. The state stepped in and discovered the whole place was contaminated with lead, even the soil around the house. So. As I prepared to move, I couldn't even put my son down. Without a place to go, we moved back in with my dad. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was on the waiting list for five different shelters, and we were homeless. Without a place to go, we moved in with my dad. It was, I was pretty much raised by my grandparents, and staying with my dad brought me back to the place when I first started using drugs. He doesn't like to live with people, but it was the only place I had to go. There was a lot of belittling and emotional abuse. Oh. He would tell me that mental illness is simply a choice. We would fight a lot and he would tell us to get out. It was very unhealthy and I was going to therapy twice a week just to cope. On top of dealing with living with my dad, things with the kids were difficult. We actually got Liam's di autism diagnosis right before he turned two. I had known something was off. He has very limited vocabulary, major sensory issues, and he has an extremely time hard time eating. He also has GI issues due to lead poisoning, but the doctor is promising um, he will outgrow that. Watching your kids suffer and not being able to help him is very frustrating. He screamed all the time, this high-pitched, horrible sound, and I was getting migraines from all the screaming. My teenage son, Jaden, was being bullied at school, and I had to switch him schools. <clears throat> I knew something wasn't right. He has a lot of problems due to our separation, including complex PTSD and reactive attachment disorder. I had a full psychological evaluation done, um, and once we got his diagnosis, we started therapy. It's hard to hold on to your sobriety and help your kids with all that stuff going on, especially without a place to live. 
And then I got the phone call from Pam, the home again after the cell room, asking if I was still homeless. I was like, are you an angel? <laughs> I went to her office in Cottage Grove to meet with her and it was amazing. She made me feel important. And I didn't want to tell her about my past because I didn't want her to not want to help me. I panted, I should never be ashamed of who I am. And that was so powerful for, for me because I felt like I've been judged my whole life. I was working on having my felonies drop off my record to be able to find a place to rent because my criminal record was making that virtually impossible. I was facing a lot of rejections and I went into a deep depression. I stopped taking my pills. During this time, I talked with Pam for like two hours. When I was in the dark, she really lifted me up. I don't have a woman in my figure in my life and she's given me a lot of strength. She said, you might hear a hundred no's but eventually you will hear yes. Apart from my therapist, I've never really had that in person where I could just be myself and not feel like I was being judged. She gives me good feedback and it's very helpful. Pam suggested that I go to a housing seminar at Solid Grounds White Bear Office. Rose, Solid Grounds Transition Specialist, <clears throat> led the seminar and she also helped me find apartments. Showed me the ropes, teaching me what questions I was supposed to ask and when I found my apartment, I needed $500 right away and saw a ground gave me that letter of guarantee. I was initially denied because my credit score was five points below the limit. Pam helped me appeal the decision it was overturned within 24 hours. After four months of searching with sell a ground, I moved into my new apartment in Fort Sleep on January 19th of this year. Since moving in, Pam... <laughs> Since moving in, Pam has helped me work towards my goals. At this age in my life, how do you go about asking for information you should have already had? All the parts of my life where I was lacking information, Pam pushed me towards. She always pushes me in the right direction. I am super grateful. We work on my budget and improving my credit score. I started the Money Wise class at East Metro Place. I went to a hidden jobs workshop put on by Elaine of, from Avivo and Alan from Solid Ground and have been approved to work as my son's personal care attendant. Every class has been super informational. When we first moved into our apartment, Liam started to regress and Jaden was also having trouble sleeping. Jasmine, Solid Ground's child service specialist, offered us help. She got them fidgets and weighted blankets, as well as cabinet locks and extra lock for the door so that Liam wouldn't run out of the house. <laughs> we are all settled in now and everyone is doing much better. Jaden is excelling in school and in day treatment. It makes me so happy. Now I only have to see my therapist one time a week. <laughs> it has gotten way better since getting out of my dad's house. My relationship with my father has actually improved. We just can't live together. He, yeah, he is a good support for the kids, and there has been a lot of growth for both of us. At my son's birthday party recently, my dad told me I couldn't be happier with you. These kids have made mar remarkable growth, and it was you. You did this. It meant so much to me. I want to make him proud. I love my dad. I know he loves me, he just isn't able to accept certain things. I also have a wonderful relationship with my other son, Jack. He's 22 now. He just joined our family therapy sessions and comes over to our house often. Recently, he told me he was proud of me. I have a lot of shame and guilt about everything that happened in our past. And he tells me not to, that I did the best I could and that's all that matters. He and his girlfriend are actually looking to move into the same apartment building as, as I live in in June. Before working with Solid Ground, it had been 20 years since I had a stable place to call home. And now I have that. And I am so thankful. And I'm going to work my hardest to make that the best possible life for my family. In the fall, I'm planning on attending a program at Normandale. And afterwards, we'll be placed as a human service tech with Hennepin County. For my kids, I want them to be happy. I want them to have high self-esteem and to be resilient. I also want people to know to never give up hope on someone. Even when they don't believe in themselves, it is their family, love, and support that pulls them through it. Without the support of my family, I probably would have given up altogether. When you start using it at a young age and you live in a world of chaos, you don't learn the important values of being a productive member of society. I am learning so much here. When you're an addict, you're always worried about getting your next fix. Now I'm learning to plan for the future. I'm hopeful, I'm positive, 
and about the future now. Solid Ground has given me the support and has believed in me, which has helped me to believe in myself. I honestly don't know where I'd be if I hadn't got that phone call from Pam that day. I am growing so much. My life has direction now, and I'm ready to embrace it. much. It is so hard to just get up here and give a speech and to share information in a meaningful way, but what you just did, that was a gift. You know, nobody's had the same challenges that you had. Those are yours and they're unique and you face them bravely, but we have pain and we have kids that we have dreams for and we want to make our world better. And by sharing your story, you gave us hope. And that was a gift. Thank you for that. Good morning. <laughs> it's a good morning. I'm Mary Berger, and I serve on your board of directors. And I just want to look for a minute at all of your bright, shining faces. It's really wonderful. Do you know who you are? You are the people who show up. I love people who show up, so thank you for that. If I'm asked, what do you want to do? Where do you want to focus your career? What do you want to be when you grow up? It always comes down to a few simple words. I want to do important work with good people. And if you did not know before, I hope you now realize that this is important work. And these here, these are really, really good people. Our world is a chaotic place, and our problems seem insurmountable. I'm sure <laughs> Charity felt as if the, her problems were insurmountable many, many, many times. But homelessness is not a small nor an easy problem. It's complex. It's all mixed up with other social challenges. We heard Tricia talk about that. Economic disparities, social and ra racial inequities, uh, impossibly tight rental markets, lack of affordable housing, unrealized educational opportunities. Homelessness as a problem is a mess. And for an individual family, it is tragic and it is painful. And I think when you're faced with a problem of such complexity and magnitude, uh, a very uh, common response and maybe even a reasonable one is one, either to surrender, we can't fix that, we can't change it, or two, to come up with an easy fix. What can we do? Find shelter for a homeless family for the night. Immediate, critical, important, but it doesn't fix the problem. <coughs> When I first learned about Solid Ground and heard their story, I was immediately pulled in because they do not surrender. They don't subscribe to an easy fix. Their model is holistic and comprehensive. They not only focus on addressing the immediate homelessness of their clients, but also breaking the cycle of homelessness for the next generation. Breaking the cycle, that is important work. I like to say that solid ground is not a place, it's a path. It's not about the amount of time a client spends in the program, it's about transformation. Each and every client at solid ground is doing the hard and important work of transformation. They are learning strategies and setting goals to overcome barriers, to find their success, provide for their families, and achieve every meaning of the word home. Thank you for showing up. You are my kind of people. Look around. The people that didn't show up, they're not here. <laughs> You're here. Everyone in this room could have had a much easier morning. You could have slept in a little longer, maybe got to work on time, put more bird seed in the feeder. But you showed up for a reason. 
It's because it's who you are. So let's make it worth your while. <laughs> Here's what you can do. It's my privilege, and I mean my real privilege, to ask you to make an investment in our ongoing success, to help every family that needs a place to call home. Did you notice I did not say donation, <laughs> but investment? This is not just a contribution to solid ground. It's truly an investment in our own community, in our own futures. And I believe it's one of the most important investments any of us can make. We started our giving circle uh, to expand our programs and provide a stable future for solid ground. If you've been inspired by what you've heard today, I would ask you to consider joining me as a member of the giving circle. As Tricia mentioned, we have an opportunity today to receive up to $10,000 from a matching challenge. For each new Giving Circle donor, up to 10 donors will receive an extra $1,000. So table captains, if you want to pass out um, the pledge forms, now's the time to do that. The first Giving Circle level is the gift of hope. What is it? The gift of hope. <laughs> it's a pledge of $1,000 for five years. A gift of this amount provides after-school tutoring and individual academic support to a student for a full year. A gift at this level, which is less than $20 a week, will help our children succeed in school and develop a love for learning that can last a lifetime. That is what it means to break the cycle. And with a matching grant, all of you new donors for a gift of hope will double your first year's gift. The next level is a gift of home. A gift of what? Oh. <laughs> it's a pledge of $2,500 a year for five years and provides family who are experiencing homelessness, like charities, with rental assistance for six months. We've heard today how important it is to have that kind of stability. We know that many of you are part of a company or a foundation, or you may just be in a position to give, give more. The gift of tomorrow, gift of? Tomorrow. Thank you. It's a pledge of $5,000 a year for five years. And a gift of this size provides life skills classes like DBT, parenting classes, tenant education, and budgeting for eight families, providing them with the skills that they need to create their future. If you're joining today as a new Giving Circle member, thank you, thank you. If you're already a Giving Circle donor, there's options on the, on the pledge form that you might consider increasing your annual amount or maybe even extending the, the multi-year commitment. We launched the Giving Circle over 13 years ago, so many of our early Giving Circle members have fulfilled their five-year pledge. And we want to thank you so much. That is an amazing contribution and investment in this organization. But you can see that our work is not done, and you might want to renew your pledge, as our families still need you. And absolutely, absolutely, we know and respect that you may wish to give a different level. Please fill in whatever amount you are comfortable with and provide your information. And remember, if your company offers a matching grant, make sure to let us know that. There's other opportunities. You might want to consider a gift of stock or including solid ground in your will, or you may have another idea. There's a box there to say, contact me. Please do that, and you better believe we will contact you. <laughs> As you think about your gift today, we want you to know that 90 cents of every dollar you donate goes straight to housing and programs for our families. And I promise you, I personally promise you, that the expert and dedicated staff that we have and your board of directors will tend to your events investment with great care. We will be both ambitious and prudent, stretching it to achieve our mission and keeping our organization secure for years to come. You know, I, I believe there's a very strong value in creating connection between community and this organization. The more people that know about the work Solid Ground does, the more likely they are to become our supporters in many ways, financial and otherwise. This event brings understanding, respect, and engagement that cannot be quantified. We hope we have deepened your connection today. And whatever gift you give, thank you on behalf of our families. 
Uh, uh, thank you as well to our sponsors, table captains, volunteers, and speakers. And the flowers in the middle of the table are for the table captains, so please take those with you. And thank each and every one of you for showing up. May your walls know joy. May every room hold laughter and every window open to great opportunity. I wish you a wonderful